Part 2, 2, Tasting History with Max. John Weaver, Rosemont, California. It's still 12.28 p.m. West Coast time. It's still May 21st, 2024. We're talking about rations, World War II, but we're also talking about personal history of dealing with the things that I don't think people had ever talked about, or if they had, didn't even bother to listen about, concerning about how you live through food stamps. Because, as I said before, you never covered anything like that that I have encountered as of yet. And to me, that's, that's very important because that history is part of me and my family. The things that we had gone through and grown up with that I had to struggle a great deal on. The personal aspects of it. They're not exactly the easiest things to deal with, I'll tell you that much. It never was. We never did advertise in schools growing up that we were on food stamps. How it was advertised is basically would we go in and we'd have to show people paperwork. But we didn't show that to school people. But we did have, but Ma did have to provide proof of income to the school when I registered. You know, I did it for elementary school. So we could be put on the school lunch program. To this day, I think they still have it. Back then, I didn't know what the school lunch program was. I thought they fed us. But I didn't realize the bureaucratic paperwork my mother had to go through to fill it out to prove to the school district and to the school that, yes, we were lacking on income. We didn't have the money to pay for our foods, uh, my food going through the school, and David as well, I think. My big brother was eight years older than I was, firstborn, so he had to go through the mess. But I don't know, and it, my brother and I had never talked about this one here, whether or not if he actually had to prove to the school what he had to go through was, was important or not. That was hard. It was hard dealing with that, I'll tell you that much. So I thought the food was, uh, was free. I mean, if I could qualify for it, I could qualify for it. But Ma was able to get me some uh, a lunchbox with milk and sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly, or a cheese sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly, if you had some uh, potato uh, chips, you could put them in between and eat them that way, or sometimes bananas, just to make the stuff more interesting to eat. But getting over to a school where they had a school lunch program, and I didn't realize about that one. Well, we moved from Arle actually from North Hollywood back in 76 to Arleta. There was a lot of changes happening during that time. I've talked about a lot of it in my own channels, left and right, on this one. In my win, as I call it, the win files. If it says win, it was also too personal in there, and I talked more deeply in it, I think. But regarding the school situation, I didn't realize my mother had to fill out a hell of a lot of paperwork just prove about the income that I would qualify for little tiny tickets. And little tiny tickets would give you uh, two things. They would give you nutrition, which would mean they're infamous, uh, <laughs> either infamous or famous, however you looked at it, coffee cake with the sausages. You know, they were a little round sausage and orange juice for uh, nutrition or breakfast. At lunch, it would be whatever they are going to be slopping in your plate. Now, if it was pizza, oh, good Lord, Max, let me tell you about that one. <laughs> pizza was the thing you traded everything for. Students loved the, the pizza. There's a sausage on it that we loved more than with the, the cheese, but no, it was still pizza. So The other kind of slops we had was like cut up processed turkey in a gravy, or was it chicken? Sometimes turkey, sometimes chicken. Couldn't tell the difference anyway, and had this processed chicken with the with the chicken gravy, poured it under on top of a glop of mashed potatoes, as your lunch, boys. Oh, terrific! Thank you very much for that one. How much for milk again? Got to pay ten cents for that one. Mm. Yeah, well, we ate with milk as long as it was assigned to us. Sometimes chocolate or regular or lucky enough. But the pizza was the one I remembered more of. And ice cream. 
We didn't trade much for ice cream. We traded more for the pizza. I loved the pizza back then. We hardly ever got it around home. And if we did, it would have been a rare thing. Pizza parlors. That's another thing you probably hadn't covered. All the fashion pizza parlors like Shakey's. There's one thing right there. Shakey's is still around in different pl in different places left and right, including uh, San Fernando Valley. Laurel Canyon. Shall we take a trip on Google Maps for that one, kind sir? Laurel Canyon. And between Van Owen and Victory. And we will proceed further down Laurel Canyon on that one. As soon as I find the 170 freeway. And I see there's Van Owen. Yay! I said before in my other video that I had seen too many changes happening over there and made me depressed as hell. I'm not kidding about that one, Max. When I've seen too many changes happening in my valley and places I don't even recognize anymore, man, it just tears me apart. So as I said before in my last video, I said about Google Earth Pro. In Google Earth Pro, I can go back as far as I can. And basically, I, I still have it set for 1994. Let's not talk about January 17th, shall we? No, no, no. Okay. I thank you for that one. Too many bad memories on that little... <clears throat> anyway. Right by the 170 freeway. If you're a valley light, and you're a valley dude, and you know about that kind of stuff. Then you realized what kind of a difference it made when you're living through those areas that either you're a part of one neighborhood or another neighborhood. But for me, the valley was my home. Didn't matter which particular hood. Oh boy, was I wrong on some occasions. But I'll leave those kind of comments for later on. So, between Van Owen and Victory, huh? Well, let's see. Doing a Google Earth Prime. And we're going down Lancash uh, Laurel Canyon. I'll do Lancashire a little bit later on that one. We had the Valley Plaza. A nice long strip of retail. We had Sears, we had Zales, we had Woolworths, we had a few contestants, and we had Albertsons, or actually we had a, we had a Hughes, I think, down there. Hughes. Oh, God, Hughes. We'd get groceries over there sometimes, when we're in the neighborhood. Ma, Dave, and I, sometimes Grandma, we all go over to uh, Sears, look at things, what's going on over there. Grandma liked to go over to uh, Woolworth and get the five and nine tchotchke stuff, so would I. But they also had the lunch counter. Talk about history with food? Lunch counters, dude, lunch counters. Where do you find them anymore? Gone. Gone, gone, gone. I like those counters. I like those counters. There's one place out in Bakersfield. There's one place out in Bakersfield. If I'm not mistaken. Google search on this one. This is a place that emulates Woolworth, but also has the lunch counter over there. Uh, LancasterOnline.com. Well, this place would have been shut down a lot of, and closed, but it's, I don't know if it's still there or not. I hope it's still there. Because if it is, I hate to see the place shut down. But it was supposed to be the last Woolworths Diner in Central California. They said it was supposed to be restored. They had old news on uh, news stories on it back in the COVID time. I think it's still active. I'm trying to see if it's still active. I just hope it is. Because if it is, we already lost the last of the Woolworth launch counter. And okay, May twenty first. Okay, so an article I was looking at uh, 2016, before we actually had 
Um, the uh, biological nightmare that kicked our butts on this one. <sighs> Last of the five and dimes. That's what hurts the most. Because something you don't see anymore. So it's got a lunch counters. Long lunch counters with the stools in them. And then with a few uh, stalls over there that you can actually eat with people. They have some interesting information about it, but I'll tell you something. I miss it. I miss the five and dime. I miss going into Woolworth and getting a grilled cheese sandwich and fries and a Coke. Or a cheeseburger and fries and a Coke over there. I miss sitting down with my brother and my mother over there. We did it in North Hollywood. Right next to Zell's restaurant was the Woolworth on, Lion Ca on Laurel Canyon Boulevard in the Valley, Valley Village. We had the big monster of Sears there. Get nearly everything you want over there. Nearly. Their uh, snack bar wasn't so great, but they had a large eating area out there. I mean, you could get your popcorn, you get hot dogs over there, but that was it. But if you really, if you wanted real food, they had food in the area. Now, I wanted to show you something else and explain something else if I can. And I wish I had the audio visual to show you this one for Google Earth. Because I looked in the area concerning about the shopping centers. There were also retail shops right behind the main drag. I mean, right behind the, the long-ass string of buildings that they would have in there. You would have an auto shop for Sears, but there would be a smaller row of shops. One of them would also happen to be a snack bar. Now, under Google Maps right now, Max, it shows that area completely wiped out, and you've got a school in there. Eminent domain and everything else. Gone forever. There is also a Shabers, S-C-H-A-B as in boy, E-R, yes, cafeteria. I know there was another one somewhere out in downtown, but they shut that one down, and the only one they had left before it shut down in the 90s, if I'm not mistaken. It was right in the area of Victory in Laurel Canyon, right behind Sears. The cafeteria, dude. That cafeteria. <sighs> You'd get the cheapest meals over there. Uh, you'd get some food, yeah, but the cheapest prices. A lot of seniors and, and fixed income would go in there and, and eat for a dime a dozen if they had to. But they would eat well. If they had a little bit more, they would go over there to Wilworth to the lunch counter if they had to. That was history right there, dude. That was history. I said something about Shakey's Pizza, didn't I? 60s and 70s. Living in North Hollywood at the time. Right along Lancashire and Boulevard, close to the 170 freeway in that area. No, not Lancashire. Laurel Canyon. Laurel Canyon. Laurel Canyon. Tasting food, or... Somewhere in the area, they had, right by railroad tracks, by Chandler, if I'm not mistaken, 7-Eleven, but they would have Shakey's Pizza in their area. Red brick building. Old-fashioned red brick building. Ye old pub. The old public pub with the styrofoam hats and a piano player in the background. 
Most of the time it would be automated, but on some days they would actually have a piano player playing a piano on the thing. And other times they would do the 20, uh, 1920s comedies. I'd never, Mac, I'd never heard of Max Santa before, but I'd seen the works of Max Santa. I'd seen Laurel and Hardy. I'd seen the Bowery Boys. I'd seen um, Keystone Cops. And the people would laugh at it. I think it was Friday or Saturday that would actually have the pizza parties going on. Long ass, long wooden benches with a big, long ass, dark tables that they would have. Pictures full of sodas and beers all over the place. And it would constantly wipe down. But if you're actually able to get your uh, legs around the benches, sit at them, eat these big ass slices of pizza, shaky special, mojo potatoes, and, for, and the chicken, man, the chicken. They would host special events over there. If you were in the Cub Scouts, dude, if you were in the Cub Scouts, then they would have scout meetings. At least our local pack would be over there, and Dead leaders would be over there too. And it would be a family place. Along the windows, they would actually have booths for people to eat at, for families. I remember those times. Fire hazard, maybe. If you want to talk about a fire hazard in the store, pal, talk about Chris and Pitts when they were still around. They got maybe two or three out here in the Southland, but when you go into a Chris and Pitts on Fulton and Victory, it's a long walk from home, I'll tell you that much, in North Hollywood. As young kids, my brother and I would get the family dinner over there. It would be cold as hell, but they'd cover over with, with foil, so we'd have somewhat cold food. <laughs> but, uh... You go inside. Actually, you make the order on the outside and probably call it in and go out there and wait for it to pick up more. Else, you go inside to make the order and in the restaurant, dark. Dark. Wooden tables. And then wood shavings on the ground. Wood shavings on the ground, Max. You knew you were in a pub. You were new in a place that had character. Outside, you'd still see the bricks with the adobe, I think it is, or something like that, the failure between the bricks. Ragged, just squeezed out of it. Not not smoothed over, but when they were built, it was built for that way. Same thing like over Shakey's when it was over in, in the Low Canyon. I don't know if it's still there or not anymore. Yeah, I feel old. I feel old and worn out. <laughs> but I miss those places. Right along the area of Chandler, they used to have the railroad tracks. Old tracks, they used to have the trains and trolleys go through about 60s, 1960s, 1970s for that area. And then somehow the line got canceled out, but they still left the tracks out there. So these days, I don't know if they're still using them for Metrolink or going to do something with those track. But back then, oh boy. Oh boy, 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 boy. Uh, there's the old shakies. I miss that place. I miss the old shakies pizza parlor. They changed it throughout the years. Back then, it wasn't looking at it the way it was. And that just tore me apart on that one. I wanted to see what the place looked like on the 360 on that one. Because, man, a long time ago, that was home. A long time ago, that was home. And it was a place my brother and I would hang out of from time to time. Or my family would get pizza over there from time to time. 
But I tell you, the other shop that would uh, really get my gall on that one, Pizza Hut. You talking about history on that one, dude? Pizza Hut. Come on, there had to have been buildings out there, red built, red top buildings with Pizza Hut on them. Be able to walk into a pizza parlor, and you would hear the music, and you smell the food. You see the salad bar out there. You would hear the the video games going like crazy. But then you'd see people in the surrounding areas, sitting in tables and benches, sitting and enjoying a pizza, either a personal or a medium or a large super supreme pan, in a pan with a spatula to lift it up and put it on your plate. And you would have the red peppers and the Parmesan cheese. I've been to a numero owners once or twice in my life. The pizza was extreme and exquisite. I'm able to bring it home. But there was one time I remember my mother, my brother, and I went over there for one time. We had uh, a pizza dinner over there just to see how the place was. Back in the 70s. It was a unique experience. But I missed the Pizza Hut better. Back in the 80s as a teenager, my brother was able to drive around. We would hang out in this one place. Or is it Sao Paulo de Boulevard? Close to Santa Coy, but that changed that place so many times, I wouldn't even recognize it if I had to. Spalvada. Tasting food was history. Or I'd seen how history had changed so much. How things had changed that I could no longer recognize what the hell I'm looking at these days anymore. That's uh, Burbank Boulevard. Yeah. But where is the lovely Sepulveda? Wait, wait, wait. ABC, that's not the ABC stadium. It's out. Oh, I'm looking at something else here, damn it. Where am I at? Oh, I'm so damn lost. It's not even funny. Oh, I'm looking at Los Angeles Community College. Okay, that's how it is. That wasn't what I was looking for. <laughs> Uh, between certain areas. Oh, how about the uh, ice cream parlors? Ferrell's? Van Nuys Boulevard, Sherman Way, right by Valley Hospital. Big black bon uh, building. My grandmother went into that place so many damn times. Heart conditions left and right. But they had good doctors and good nurses during that time. But if you wanted ice cream, Shirt Way. Down the street, there's Farrell's ice cream. Watch out for the zoo. Guys be running around in their pinstripe suits with those cheesy mustaches they put on them, and then the straw hats that Farrell on there. Uh, ice cream galore, and candy, and big, huge monsters to put into your mouth that you couldn't even chew on because it'd break your jaw and break your teeth. You had to suck and and suck, 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 suck on this damn huge solidified candy thing here. Just suck it down until it's minuscule and then you're able to eat it. A lot of licorice. Back then I used to be a huge fan of licorice. Not anymore these days. Not anymore. It just, I couldn't stand it anymore on that. Too much of a sugar fix and too much of a pain in the butt on that one, I'll tell you that much. But Sir Farrell's, you go for the excitement. Every time somebody would be ordering a big, huge trough, they would have a large party. One person could not eat that much ice cream and live. Especially when you had about 20 ice cream scoops and a damn thing smothered with syrup and every other kind of topping. Just piled on on this monster tray. But here's the thing that would get you tossed out of here, Max. 
Never, ever stick your foot out when these guys are running. That's a good way of getting yourself tossed out of there real fast and banned. How many people? Well, almost did it myself. But I did. My brother tried a few times. And he kept coming back for more. He was a glutton for punishment. But when my brother and I went over there one time, we didn't. We just wanted to enjoy the ambiance before it disappeared. But we remember seeing how many people had been splattered with so much ice cream all over the place, including the customers. I mean, this... This was Dennis the Menace and Junior the Mean Little Kid from from Red Skelton going crazy. Combined into one person. We weren't the only ones doing it. But I don't remember who the hell got nailed. I remember we went back a couple of more times before we actually did get banned from it. I think my brother was having too much fun with it. But it was, it was good times during those days. Sizzlers. Before they disappeared out here in the Antelope Valley, there was places, and also in the San Fernando Valley, there were places that you would go for for a good steak. Some people said it wasn't so good anymore. I mean, they changed for the past 20 or 30 years. So the quality of food wasn't that there. But I could tell you back in the 80s and 90s, it was. It was still okay. My mother, my brother, and I would go over to the one out in Northridge, or by the Northridge Mall. It'd be on Tampa, right above the railroad tracks. And we would go there for special occasions. Hell, we would even go over to Marie Callender's when they were still in operation. Mama ordered pasta, primavera, uh, or shrimp pasta. That stuff would have loaded the garlic. Oh, God. She'd still love it, but she'd wolfed it down somewhat. But when it came down for Sizzlers there, Max, you'd go in there, you'd get your order, you'd order your steak, and then you'd find your, your place to sit. And then if you ordered the salad bar, oh, my God, that was, a, that was one of the better things over there because salad bar, you would have the extras over there. You'd have some of the fried ship in there if they actually had it. But then you would have... Uh, the macaroni and cheese. You would have the chicken wings. The chicken wings, dude. The bulbish portion of the of the where more meat is at. That's what you get. And for me, I was always getting a roughage. I mean, I'd have some of the other stuff before the steak dinner would come in, but you know, I'd have a bigger. St I'd had an active, more, a more active stomach that could process the food. So. Uh, we'd stay there for about a couple of hours anyway, just to eat and digest. Just about anyway. My mother loved the uh, shrimp so much. The all-you-can-eat shrimp. She did. But she would love to eat it at home. Well, we'd have to find ways to put it into a large bag. And bring the stuff home. Not to mention the cheese toast. That was my favorite, the cheese toast on that one. And then, of course, you get your steak. They would have the, Dave and Ma would have the sh uh, shrimp or, st or lobster or crab, whatever they had over there. Mostly lobster. Can't stand it. Uh, it's bland lumber, you know. Beef, chicken, pork, lamb, if I could get it. That was about it. Tuna, uh, canned tuna, maybe. I was never a fish kind of guy. Couldn't stand the bones. I could eat the frozen food, but sometimes they still had the bones processed in it. So the fish sticks and the fish fillets, I had to watch out for it. Not too fun chucking on those dams and choking on those things. Not, no, 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 not fun. Tasting history. Oh, God, Lord. I need to ribeye steaks that they would have. Sirloins all the time. I'd have the steak and mallow with chicken or the steak and a bocce chicken with uh, 
sometimes french fries or sometimes with rice peel off going out and about with my brother traveling sometimes we would go over to Tommy's Tommy's restaurant there have been a few Tommy places that we'd been to and Roscoe right by the 405 and the brewery you couldn't smell a damn thing even inside you still smelled the uh, yeast it was coming through every place but you know, we got close enough to the chili, you could smell that. Oh, the fries that they would have. There's a season of salt on it. Oh, I miss those days. I miss that food. Heartburn galore. Heartburn galore. What else? I'm not about to say McDonald's. Screw that noise. There is a restaurant... The Deli's restaurant out in Parthenia, right by Paul Plummer, Brent's. Yeah, I've been to a few other delis in my lifetime. Brent's kind of topped everything. It's really good about their corned beef and their pastrami. As my family had continued to live up until 2005, Brent's was our go-for. Uh, we'd go for the sandwiches over there like crazy. We could afford them. And sandwiches, like half the sandwich would be your meal right there. And the other half of the sandwich would be the meal next time. I miss places like that. Uh, foster Freeze, not that much. There were a few places that we went to for Foster Freeze. Only if we had a hankering for it, me and my brother. Or even Arby's, for that matter. The national stuff they had. There was also a couple other hamburger places. Melody's. Where was that at? Somewhere along the uh, Reseda Boulevard. Holiday Burgers on uh, Mission and Sepulveda area. On that one. I'm trying to talk about the stuff in past ten, uh, almost past tense because to me it is past tense when they're Closed down, shut down, or changed into something else that I don't recognize them anymore. See, for me, back in the 60s through the 90s, everything is, you know, they changed everything in past the 90s and closed a lot of places I used to go to that mattered a great deal for me. Restaurants I've been to like crazy. Denny's? Well, I know they're still out there. I know. It's been a national chain for God knows how long. But some places that they actually had out there, including one closer to uh, Sherman Way and Van Nuys, my family would go over there for Easter Sunday. You know, for Easter Sunday meal over there. Again with the grilled cheese and fries. Or patty milled. Patty milled. But concerning about recipes, on my own channel, on the recent videos I've done for today's date, I'm still trying to get them processed. They'll probably be on the wind files unless I got them labeled for something. I'll be talking to another person left and right, but you know it'll have something in there about recipes that I've I've dealt with. Foods I had, my family lived and survived on. The foods I'm surviving on right now as it is. I mean, if I wanted a breakfast meal, yeah, the go between you go to fast foods or you fix it yourself at home. Now, get back to the egg stuff. Yeah, I tried the eggs. Well, I could stomach the stuff, but I'm usually doing the raw eggs myself. You know, just fry them up, scramble them up. That's the only thing I know is how to fry and scramble things. But I just wanted to share some of this information with you, Max. A uh, little bit of perspective, a little bit of history. I never fought on any war, so I don't know what it's like to go through hell like that. My brother had. And he wouldn't talk about it. You know, being in the military as he was for several years. He wouldn't talk about it as much. I try to talk about what I remember about him. 
But regarding living in the San Fernando Valley all those years and seeing restaurants and stores shut down, places changed into different places. There's also things I also missed. Good oriental food places. There used to be a shop called Tang's on San Fernando Mission and Balboa. And it disappeared out in the 80s on that one. It shut down. Closed up shop. We couldn't find a or good oriental place. But we had gotten the best soups and, and chow mains and lo mains over there. And then there was also another shop somewhere along Sepulveda Boulevard, right by the 405 freeway they used to have. I don't know if it's still there or not. I don't know if it's still there or not. Kind of hurts when I remember places like this. Because it still gets to me at times. So I guess this is one thing I'm going to be talking about on my channel again. As soon as I get the downloads going and things processed left and right. So, you may hear from me again, Mr. Max. Take care and bon appétit.